Hello friends and welcome. It has been quite a while but I was actually reading all of your comments to come back with more vlogs and updates so here we are. Today I wanted to take you through some of my morning routine and then to a horse auction that Queasy and I are going to have a look at later on today. A lot has changed here at McFarlane Ranch. They had some building contractors in a few times over the last year and have added a new barn for their cow herd and they've added a shop where you can buy organic and local produce. Of course, once we heard they were getting work done on the ranch, we kicked up a fuss and finally an actual paddock and outdoor shelter was added. Now we can keep the horses out full time if we want to. The boys are doing great, Gizmo did go on stall rest for a little bit since he was kicked by one of the ranch horses, but he is back to his usual boisterous self. Jericho and Nikita recently went on an endurance ride together and it was hosted by Wanderlust Ranch, and while I don't have any footage from it, Nora Edwards, who is actively competing in another team, has a video up on it if you'd like to see that. So today my plan is to give Jericho his breakfast and then take him out on a short endurance training run. We still do jumping but he's enjoyed the endurance runs a lot more since he can get a little bit frustrated with the groundwork of jumping. If you are new here, Nikita is an Anglo-Arabian mare and Gizmo is a draft slash sport horse cross, both owned by my best friend Queasy and Jericho is my thoroughbred. This morning I didn't film myself feeding them because they can be a bit of a handful, but they all got their breakfast. I got some barn chores done and when I came back, Gizmo looked like this. Why is it always the greys? I do not envy that job. Then it was time to grab Jericho from the field. Gizmo was not happy that I was taking his friend away, but Jericho was a really good boy for being caught. We've been working on recall in the field and I've been exploring more R plus methods of training. I will say though, Jericho discovered how much he loves butting open unlocked gates and while to him it's just playful, we do always have to double check the locks now. It was such a lovely morning for a ride and I was so happy because he was genuinely being really cooperative. But it wouldn't be Jericho if he didn't spook randomly at something and then run off into the road. I love how in this footage you can see the moment I start running and panicking because he's in the road. Thankfully the ranch was pretty quiet so there wasn't any immediate dangers and he was really easy to catch once he spotted a patch of grass so he didn't go too far. What did he spook at, you may ask? I still have no idea. I do wish I could have seen something on the footage, but there was really nothing there. Unless he suddenly forgot that the tripod was there. Anyway, everything was fine. I just hand walked him for a little bit to positively reinforce that there was nothing to be afraid of and to get a better sense of his new energy levels. I decided that mounting up in the round pen was probably a good idea to prevent another runaway. We've actually been working on standing still after I've mounted up because he used to walk off just as I was putting my leg over. I did a nice 20 minute warm up of trotting and walking on both sides as I wanted the ride to be pretty pacey to work on his rhythm and stamina. goes the helmet cam. 
I can't even begin to tell you how much stronger Jericho feels now that he's in full work. I don't compete him as much as I did before because I'm trying to focus on his health more than trying to go to every show or race available. It was really important that while he was steadily getting fitter and stronger that I sit back and work on our bond and his behaviours. The last thing I wanted was a horse that knew his own strength and was happy to ditch me at a moment's notice. And that's when I began doing in-hand training and spending more time with him out of saddle. And I think we both really enjoyed it. I made sure to check on Nikita and Gizmo on our way out. Jericho has actually run this route before, so I know that he was excited to go. He used to be really reluctant to work under saddle, but switching up our routine has given him a spark that I haven't really gotten to see before. The ride took about 45 minutes, so I chopped it down into a little montage so that you can sit back and enjoy the ride. Unfortunately, our lovely ride did have a hiccup near the end as he spooked at an old wagon. I'm not sure if it got moved or if it's always been there, but he did look at it and do a few side steps and canter which caught me off guard. Nothing major though, I let him continue on in a canter for a bit to get his rhythm back, but you can see by his ears he wasn't too happy about the whole situation. When we got closer to the ranch, I put him back into a trot as there were other riders about and I didn't want to risk him causing a problem if he was already frustrated. All in all, a pretty good ride, especially over the bridges and round the sharp bends, I really felt him engage and work with me. He was absolutely filthy from all the dust. The Great Plains region has notoriously bad air quality from the dry ground. We did think about moving for a bit, but we have quite close relations with McFarlane Ranch and we haven't found anywhere yet that has facilities that are big enough to accommodate us. Jericho got loads of treats and pats for his amazing ride. He really felt focused and fluid and he certainly deserved the rest of the day off in his paddock with his pals. Once he was untacked and brushed, the late morning sun was really showing off the shine in his coat and I think he looks absolutely handsome. He's been on performance supplements and they're really making a difference. After I was finished cooing over my gorgeous boy, I led him back into the field. It's super cute how Nikita and Gizmo will come over when they see him near the gate. One area we're still a little bit rusty on is the way Jericho will rile up those two after I let him go. He just gets super excited to run around with his friends. My next mission was to go finish all of my barn chores and then get ready to travel to the auction. Please enjoy these paddock cams of these three playing. I hold my bed, waiting for someone to knock at my door.
afternoon, Queasy and I were in our nicer outfits ready to go. We were going by train and unfortunately it was running a little bit late so by the time we arrived at Pronghorn Ranch we only really had time to set up camera shots and look at the few horses in the pens nearby. Pronghorn Ranch is situated in Big Valley and boasts luscious forests and mountains. The ranch itself is a working ranch, much like McFarlane's, but some see it as a more touristy place due to the fact it hosts summer rides and overnight stays. The owners are very well connected in the breeding industry and are famous for their high quality horses and events. If you love trail riding, this is certainly the place to book and they do beginner friendly rides too. Something I was initially unaware of was that this auction was being live streamed as well, so they were taking online bids. Personally, that sounds like such a risk to spend money on a horse you haven't seen in person, but I was informed that there are really strict rules and regulations for this auction, and the sellers had to be whitelisted. All horses were of good breeding and thoroughly vet checked, which was really nice to know. Honestly, I was more excited about being able to see all of the lovely horses, whereas Queasy was keeping an eye out for a good purchase. Or at least, that was the plan. We decided to go and stand by the entrance to the auction pen, as Queasy said it's really important to see how the horses behave when entering and exiting, as well as how they move inside the ring. First up were horses that were bred for ranching locally. This horse was a stunning American paint mare that had three years of experience ranching and was seven years old. She was described as sure-footed and quietly confident, which I couldn't help but agree with just by the way she moved. She looked really sweet and went for a decent sum of money. More than I would have paid for a ranch horse, but the online bids were driving up the prices apparently. Next was the cutest gelding. He had only been in work for about six months and was four years old. He looked bigger than the mare before him and probably had a bit more growing to do as well. He was super curious and kept looking around at everybody, but he still seemed really quiet for a colt. I feel like he'll grow up to be a fantastic guy. Whoever bought him was very, very lucky. Then there was this beautiful dark chocolate blanket Appaloosa. She was a 10 year old mare with a lot of work under her belt, both in ranching and reining. She went for a lot of money because apparently she had famous reining lineage and had really good prospects. Next we had a little firecracker of a black Overo. He was only five but was being trained for ranching and rodeos. Gorgeous guy, but we were informed that he was excitable and a little strong under saddle. That didn't stop the bids rolling in for him, and honestly, I don't blame them, because despite all of that, he was an absolute stunner. Then we had an older breeding mare. She was 15 and had lots of ranching experience and had had four successful births. She did seem really calm and sweet and would probably end up being the lead mare, no matter what herd she was in. She did go for a lower price due to her age, but I think I heard that she went to a trail riding yard, so I'm sure she'll be well taken care of there. I cannot tell you how excited I was when they started bringing out the mules. There were three in total and they were absolutely adorable. First, they brought out this absolute unit of a draft mule. This guy was genuinely huge. I think I heard that he was bred for log pulling and wagon driving, but apparently he was sold to a family to be used as a riding horse. I do hope they have something smaller for the kids because that is a really long way to fall. He looked to be an absolute sweetheart though and was described as a gentle giant. See, remember when I said Queasy was looking for a horse and I was just there to look at the pretty horses? Well, this Appaloosa mule came out and I just immediately put down the starting bid. She was absolutely gorgeous and I didn't even think I wanted a mule. She was eight years old and had done some light ranch work but mostly did trail riding. It was an impulse bid but I ended up being outbid way beyond my budget anyway. Can't say I wasn't sad to see her go but it was probably for the best. The last mule was a beautiful dark bay and he looked a lot like Jericho. 
I was joking to Queasy that Jericho would absolutely flip if I brought home a mule that looked like him. The mule was seven and had a really lively spirit about him. I think he went for a decent price as well. Then the coolest thing happened. They brought out the wild mustangs that have been rescued from auction and select bidders could try and purchase a mustang for training. Of course, Queasy was a select bidder, but she didn't end up seeing anything she wanted as she's pretty particular about the horses that she works with. Still really cool to see these stunning wild horses up close though. And finally, they had a special event where they sold three Arabians that were produced by the best breeder in Saint-Denis. These Arabians were apparently a tradition at this auction and would go for tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. And boy, did these guys not disappoint. The first was a three-year-old colt. I have never seen a horse with this type of coat, let alone on an Arabian. He had almost perfect confirmation, and despite being young, he was really well-tempered apart from a few head tosses. He was sold for an insane amount of money, and bidding went on for almost four minutes. Queasy did throw in a few bids near the start, but the price just got too insanely high. Whoever bought this horse had some serious funds. If you thought the last horse was stunning, take a look at this flax and chestnut. Being a sucker for high socks, I fell in love with this little mare. She was only six but had a background in dressage. I think if I saw this horse warming up in a dressage test, I might just accept defeat right then and there. Her coat had an insane gloss and shine that kind of put Jericho's to shame. Once again, this girl went for an insane amount of money to some fancy competition rider. But when the final horse came out, I knew it was over. Her coat was so blindingly bright and she had gorgeous, long, luscious mane and tail, especially for an Arabian. My jaw must have been on the floor because Queasy genuinely asked me if I was going to bid. And I'm not going to lie, I really wanted to. Like, really, really, really wanted to. But if her price was anything like the previous two, I stood no chance. She was perfect. She was everything I didn't know I was looking for and more. I suddenly felt really anxious because I knew I'd have to at least try, even if it was pointless. I put in the starting bid and immediately I was outbid. I bid again and again, and again, and again, but I was continually getting outbid both in person and online. The price was getting higher and higher and I was running out of money. I genuinely didn't know what to do. I really wanted this horse and I would have given anything to get her. I remember her in songs Decades old but it doesn't matter 